Hello, I'm Chris Parkin and I'm out foxing tonight with the Infrared F835R thermal imaging monocular and this one has now got a rangefinder on board. Here's the Infrared as supplied. You get a carry case, a large comprehensive instruction manual, that's the charging port for the two batteries and there's a USB-C cable too to power that. There is also a charging adapter, that's a European plug and that's the HDMI cable to connect to a larger display screen. I've got the long neck lanyard attached and you also get a shorter wrist lanyard supplied as well as a large lanyard for the actual carry case itself. The instruction manual is comprehensive and easy to work through. The 5mm objective lens in combination with advanced thermal imaging hardware provides exceptional detection. The FH35R can boast detection ranges up to 1818 meters in complete darkness. The collar on the back will shade your eye and that can be rotated for left or right-handed use. On the side here we've got the focus for the eyepiece itself to make sure the screen inside is nice and sharp and on the left side here are the replaceable batteries. On the front we've got a flip down lens cap and we've got image focus there for when we're changing distances in the field. These buttons control all the menu, the power up, down and we'll go through those a bit later. On the underside we've got standard quarter inch tripod mount and here under this rubber flap we've got the USB-C port for offloading data. The Finder 2 series has a built-in laser range finding module which provides both single ranging and continuous ranging capability helping to capture target distance accurately. Out foxing this evening but we're quite surprised by so many road here we don't normally get on this piece of land. The blue coloured lenses you can see under my left hand are the laser range finding optics. Still in full daylight this is the first fox peering through the fence just over 100 metres away. It doesn't seem to attack to any sound we make at all, whether positive or negative. Certainly doesn't seem bothered by us if he can hear us and just carries on his way. The FH35 is equipped with a 12 micron, 640 by 512 pixel high resolution sensor. The net D rating is less than 35 millikelvins for greater thermal resolution. Everything is displayed on a 1024 by 768 pixel LED screen display inside. It's worth mentioning that when using the infrared with an additional display screen so that an observer can watch what's going on, there's notably very little latency or lag, so it's easy to keep up with the situation in real time. Batteries can be quickly removed and replaced with new ones in a matter of seconds. Carrying an additional battery pack as standard can extend battery life up to 12 hours. The supplied batteries are rated at five and a half hours operating time and I've found this to be quite realistic. Nothing seemed to dish this fox from his path. He was going where he was going and we weren't stopping him. The infrared is controlled by four soft touch tactile buttons on top. Front right does power, front left does menu. The two rear buttons are the cursor keys for use within the menus. These control functions like zoom up and down or also change between the colour palettes. There are lots of sub-functions within other menus and the instruction book covers these in great detail. When not in any menu mode, a short press on the front up cursor fires the laser for a single range finder reading. A longer hold sets up continuous readings. A short press on the rear button takes a camera still and a long hold sets it videoing. So after seeing a lucky daytime fox, now we're in position, we're going to put the caller out and see what we can see later after dark. The first arrivals are even more road here, which is shown in a very crisp white on black thermal picture at about 200 metres. This fox at 180 metres is coming in towards the caller. This road here got as close as 20 metres away from me before it realised. I think it actually heard the buttons clicking as I was changing through the colour palettes to look at it. Note just how much detail in texture you get from the temperature sensitivity of the sub 35 millikelvin sensor. Here you can see two more in the different colour palettes. It's also notable how smooth the image quality is with the fast refresh rate on the screen. They're just over 100 metres away. Two more deer pricking the heads up out of foliage over 250 metres away. Here you can see me zooming in to show a little bit more detail. And the various colour palettes offered are standard white hot, black hot, red hot, target highlight, iron bow and rainbow. You can switch between warm and cool hues as well, 
Under the warm hue, users can get softer imaging to avoid visual fatigue, and under the cold hue, users experience visually clear imaging quality with rich details and highlighting targets. Again, it's notable that even with the heat from the village roofs and beyond, we aren't having problems with thermal metering across the field of view, so we can still see the deer easily without having everything dimmed down by those hot spots in the background. As we come back in towards the farm, these sheep are between about 50 and 100 metres away. The IRA will record both videos and stills and there is a 32 gigabyte internal storage capacity. This can be transferred either using the Wi-Fi or the USB-C cable supplied. Overall dimensions are 160 by 90 by 50 millimetres and weight is less than 400 grams. It's got an IP67 rating for water and dust proof and is operable from minus 20 to plus 50 degrees centigrade. The Finder 2 series and the Infiray Outdoor app operate hand in hand, easily handling frame sync and data output. The app offers additional features such as access to the online Infiray community and after sales support. I think it's important to commend just how well the Infiray Thermal produces a thermal image to convey the natural aspects of what you're looking at. Everything from block work to metal work to hot spots and animals, you receive texture across all objects and this makes shooting both easier, safer and better for identification of quarry at any distance. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching some of that footage from the FH35. I've been using this for ratting and for foxing and I've seen a lot more deer actually locally than usually we're expecting. I do still tend to prefer white equals hot because I find it makes the hot matter, i.e. the animals, the quarry I'm looking for, pop from the background. But I'm starting with these high resolution sensors to enjoy the black equals hot because at close range especially, it does give me more detail and it can be more relaxing over long evenings hunting. In terms of operating the unit, the buttons are tactile, it's easily in one hand. You can swap it to the other hand if necessary and push the eye cup round to suit the other eye and it works just as well. The footage I've recorded has been good. Using it has caused no problems. Battery power has lasted. The onboard indicator has worked well in terms of its prediction of the available usage time left. Picking up quarry has been no problem beyond 600 meters, which is about my limit of my land anyway. The rangefinder works very well and I've been using it all the time. I especially like the fact that when it's on continuous, if I'm ratting with a friend, they, through their night vision rifle scope, can see exactly where I'm looking. And as a team effort, it has made ratting a lot faster, just using night vision and thermal without resorting to a thermal rifle scope as well. I was hoping to have got the unit further back into the winter, which would have given me more capability of testing it when the air quality was bad, especially with fog and damp in the air. As we go through spring and the weather warms up, the fact that we've got less differential between the temperature of the quarry and the air around it shows up better the sub 35 millikelvin sensors sensitivity to pick up that lovely texture of thermal image across the body of the animals. Perhaps one of the situations where you notice the thermal sensitivity the most is because at this time of the year with the pelage of the deer changing from winter to summer coats, you're seeing spots of colour on them, which of course actually represents the greater thermal gradient between the cold and the warmer spots as the coat thickness changes. Well, thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe and please comment and don't forget to click the notification bell so you can see our weekly uploads. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.